Hi everyone, this is Michelle, formerly Afro Expats channel. Now we are Expat Life Mexico. Um, a part of the reason I'm rebranding is to tie into Casa Elm, E L M dot com. Uh, that's my guest house that I now am operating in San Miguel de Allende in Central Mexico. It's been a while since I've been here. Now I'm back on the bandwagon trying to bring you more improved and better information about life in San Miguel de Allende, which is located in Central Mexico. I love, 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 love living here. Been here since 2018. And we're trying our best to just kind of tighten what we're offering. And in doing so, it is that we're trying to tie the two things together. So the channel used to be Afro Expats and now it is Expat Life Mexico, which is CasaELM.com. So ELM is Expat Life Mexico, just so it makes a little bit more sense to you. So you will see a lot of updates and information that will be continuing with interviews. Um, we're gonna bright, broaden our horizons just a little bit um, and just be a little bit more clear in our messaging um, and also talking more about the things and the events that we are hosting at CasaElm.com and you'll also be able to find us at ExpatLifeMexico.com so those two will work together. So in saying all of that, I'm going to first say if you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so below. There's a lot of really um, important information and I am also interviewing a lot of cool people that live in Mexico, people possibly who want to come to Mexico, people that are staying at my guest house about their experience in San Miguel de Allende. Today I decided to go ahead and get back on the bandwagon by interviewing my son. I've had several people ask me to do more interviews with males. Um, and one of the suggestions um, from the comments from the audience was to do it with my son, um, which I think is a great idea. Um, you know, we've been here for four years and this whole journey has been really amazing. Um, and we're just trying to continue to grow while we live here. It's been really amazing for me as a parent to see him thriving in this country. So we're gonna do the best interview that we can, right, little man? Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna mix it up a little bit with some English and Spanish, right? So in saying all of that, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell if you wanna see what new updates and videos are coming when I do put them on my channel. And again, welcome back. Thank you so much for being here, for supporting everything that we do, and also for being patient with this process because it has been a crazy couple of months. Um, but here I am. So without saying too much more, I'm gonna let little man introduce himself to you. So my name is Micah. Mi nombre es Mika. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about life in San Miguel de Allende? It's nice. What's nice about it? You, there are a lot of places to visit. You can go on trolley rides. Mm -hmm. There are yummy churros. Yes. What are churros? They're like... Mm, skinny fried donut? Skinny fried donut, but like... If they're star shaped, but going longer. Mm -hmm. So churros are like fried dough in the U.S. and they put different things inside. So you can get it with chocolate, you can get it with syrup or caramel or just sugar or plain. They're so delicious. Um, there's a space in town or restaurant in town that we get them from. They're so yummy and crunchy. Um, okay, so tell me about just kind of like your initial experience when you came to San Miguel. Mm -hmm. What did you think about it? the first summer that we were here. The first summer, it was nice. What I got nice? to go to some places. My cousins came over. Mm -hmm. We took summer camp. Mm -hmm. We went on a trolley ride. Mm -hmm. 
And that's kind of most of the stuff that was fun that we did. Okay. You guys also did more than the trolley ride. You went horseback riding. Yeah. Uh, you were learning Spanish lessons, taking Spanish. What do you feel about Spanish? I feel good about it. Mm -hmm. Tell us something in Spanish that you like to do in, in San Miguel. What's like some of your fun stuff to do in San Miguel, but in Spanish? Mm, me gusta ir a la gruta en San Miguel de Allende porque es muy cool. Es muy cool. So La Gruta is the hot springs that I'm sure you've seen some of the videos of us going there. Um, I love going there on Fridays in the morning, <laughs> super early when it's nice and cool out and then getting in that water. Also amazing. I've been trying to make that our weekly therapy, right? Um, tell me what it was like for you the first year of school. Uh, year. Mm -hmm. Not really that good. Yeah, what wasn't good about it? A lot. Um, like what? My first new school wasn't treating me very well. In what way? Some kids took my bell and broke it, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So the first school, I'll answer that because mommy knows and mommy had to set them straight. <laughs> Um, the first school was, I think it wasn't that it wasn't, it, it was good, it was a good school, but, um, you know, the things that we had to kind of uh, learn in the process of moving was, my expectations were to get him in a school that was bilingual um, and just kind of get him started on learning the language. And I guess because I wasn't familiar with what's the best way to do this, I just looked for the best possible school option for him. And I thought, well, okay, you know, we, end, we got the entrance exam out of the way, we got the uniforms, we got the materials, um, you know, we found out a little bit about the curriculum, but in doing all of that, I think, what parents probably should know or understand is to not have like these like pressures, societal pressures of getting your kid in school and they gotta learn and blah, blah, blah. Cause he was only in the first grade. He had just finished kindergarten in Florida and he was only entering into the first grade. And I think I just wanted to like, you know, get us off to a great start. And I was more concerned about um, just making sure it was like a smooth transition. Well, there's really no great smooth transition when you move internationally, right? I mean, it does take a while to figure out where your kid fits in. Um, the schools are different here. They had a Waldorf school, Montessori school, bilingual schools, and those are all bilingual as well. Um, and I interviewed several schools, but I think what I think I did right was being flexible with if I needed to move him. We just did that, right? So the first school year, how many schools did you go to? Do you remember? At least three. Mm -hmm. If not, it two. Was, no, it was three. So okay. the first school was Academia International which yes. they're known for like being with international students. Normally that means one parent is a foreigner and the other parent is probably Mexican. That's usually what that means. Um, and it's not a bad school. I know that they built a new, a brand new school recently. We haven't yeah. seen it, but we were only there for a few months. It just didn't work out. Um, and I think it was more timing. I actually like the school enough and I really like the staff and that was one of the reason why reasons why we decided to give them a try. So then what was the second school? New land known as NWL. Mm -hmm. It was nice. I made a few friends mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So with New Land, um, that's a more of a technology kind of base school where 
they do a lot of their work on iPads and you know they're a little bit so although they're bilingual I feel like they're a little bit more of a traditional Mexican bilingual school um, you know because then you also have uh, Arbol de Vida which is a Waldorf school I did not send him there because of a lot of reasons um, I do like the Waldorf concept however um, they wanted him to repeat kindergarten and I was like no I'm not having that um, so I didn't really want him to necessarily go backwards and so I decided against Waldorf but if he were younger I probably would put him in Waldorf I, I just like the the freedom that they give children to be creative and be children um, and maybe that might have been good for him but um, yeah I just I, I didn't think it was progressive enough for him at that age and then we ended up going to after Papalotes and what did you think about Papalotes? Amazing yeah so Papalotes is kind of almost the same concept as Waldorf and I moved him there because the other things just weren't a good fit right part of the reason I'm saying that is I just want parents who might be considering bringing their children here to be flexible um, you know especially with younger children it's really not a big deal if you know at least not to me if the kid is not performing up here and it's not perfect and it's whatever like let them be children um, understand that they're in a new culture new country new language right and that's challenging and also trying to fit in just imagine like you know being the new kid on the block at that young age and not being able to communicate and feeling you know probably a little bit vulnerable like what did you feel at Newland I mean Newland you had some behavioral challenges there what did you think about that uh, not really feeling it do you want to go back yes but okay not in the way I was treated there yeah why do you want to go back to Newland the technology school <laughs> well first of all I had some friends there. Mm -hmm. Oliver Woods is still going. So is Mia. Callan, I think. I'm not sure. Who is? Oh. Okay, so this is just, you want to go there because your friends are there. But you can still see your friends. But do you want to go there because of the education? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, then we're not going there. Um, so Newland <laughs> is um, not a bad school and yeah we could have struggled through it but I just there were just some things I didn't love about it um, and because of those things and a couple incidents I don't know that I would send you back there however you know maybe that will change in the future um, and then let's fast forward to Atabal. So he started second grade at Atabal, which is a Montessori school. So I'm kind of walking you all through the things and types of schools that are actually available here in uh, this kind of a small town. Um, there are lots of options. Um, what did you think about Atabal, which is the Montessori school? Mm, it was good, very yeah. good. Yeah, okay. I love the staff at, at um, Atabal as well. Dr. Lupita is the director, and um, I just really like that they're very sensitive and caring towards the children, um, their emotions, um, their emotional development. Um, I can't say that the education level is, you know, peak. It's okay. Um, I, if I had to recommend them, I would say they're good for children that are in second grade and lower. I don't know. I mean, what did you think? Did you feel like you learned a lot there? Or, yeah? What did you feel like you learned there? A lot. Like what? Yeah? You don't remember? Okay. 
he didn't learn that much in my opinion, but if you felt- In my like opinion, it, I did learn much. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, midway through the second grade was when COVID, you know, swooped down and changed all of our lives and um, they had to kind of scramble to be an online school and that's not their style. I know that Newland, they were uh, able to kind of adjust quickly to this new way of learning online because their technology school already had things in place um, where kids could work on their iPad. But with our ball, no, with Montessori school, Atabal, that was not the case. Uh, so it was, it was a little difficult, right? I mean, all of us working from home with you, they went to having just two hour sessions per day. But then when, what was it? Second grade rolled around for second grade, third grade, third grade. So with third grade, um, they kind of stepped it up, right? And their program was eight to one. What did you think about the online learning? You didn't care for it? No. no. Neither did you. No, I did not. <laughs> Thanks for being honest. Um, yes. No, I didn't care for it. But, you know, Zoom, right? Zoom. What did you think about Zoom? Zooming? Uh, not really feeling it. Yeah. Okay. Well, tell us what you're doing now. Like, how do you feel about what you have now, which is... Actually, no school. It's uh, more of a one-on-one. -on -one, well, not more of. It's a one-on-one -on -one situation. What do you think about that? I feel good. Yeah. It's good. What do you uh, like about your weeks? What's different than when you were in the classes? When I was in Atabal, when mm -hmm. before COVID hit, well, it was longer. So first, and I had to go five days a week, mm -hmm. which was at least 32 hours. Mm -hmm. And then, Miss Judy, I have to go three days a week, mm -hmm. which would be 15 hours. Mm -hmm. So do you feel like you've learned a lot? in those 15 hours a week, or do you feel like you've learned less? A lot more. Okay, how come you feel that way? Because first, she's a better teacher. Mm -hmm. I can't say that. Mm -hmm. And she gives us di different stuff and teaches us better ways to do math. that we have more learning by taking breaks to refresh our brain mm -hmm. and then we get back on it mm -hmm. which will help us learn more so you take because it's refreshed break? so you take brain breaks yes okay now okay so why we got miss judy was because he wasn't learning online. And I just, I think in this whole process, I've realized Micah's style is obviously, a lot of our style probably would be better learning one-on-one, -on -one, especially younger children, because then the teacher can kind of adapt how she teaches to how that child absorbs the information. Um, you know, and I just feel like I've grown as a parent because when I came here, like I said earlier, I was so, you know, on like this kind of what I expected the routine to be for him to get this education base. And that was go to school, you know, do the bilingual thing, study, 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 five days a week, let's get on board, let's get this, da da da. da. And what I've learned in this process is, is that my son works better in a one-to-one -one situation, he thrives way more. And because of that, we can do more concentration on his skill sets and how he learns without him just 
slinking into the back of a classroom at 30 hours a week somewhere in a, in a school and then he's not actually absorbing the information. Um, I have seen him grow in leaps and bounds in math, um, spelling, um, just scientific facts and information and just the way he um, comprehends things, not just in English, but also in Spanish, right? Do you kind of agree with that? Yeah. What do you feel has been your biggest improvement being with Miss Judy? And then I'll talk a little bit more about how that came about. Math. Yeah. Yeah, when he got to her, she did a third grade math assessment, which was halfway through the third grade year. And um, he really did not, this was a Texas math assessment or a third grade assessment test. And it was mostly focused on math and he did not do great. But within about six months, you came out pretty shiny. Right? You came out like a Buddha, shiny, shiny. Um, so yeah, and saying that, um, how we came about this, I just realized he was not learning that much on the Zoom, which I'm sure millions, millions of parents can attest to the same experiences um, with their children working online. One thing I can say about Mexico that I've learned in terms of education is to kick back a little bit. Um, I've met so many parents that do different things and their kids are just incredibly talented and creative because we're not trying to shove them in the box. You know, um, this might sound a little free spirited and hippie-ish or something like that. But what I definitely learned was to just kick back a little bit, um, that it's okay to restructure things that work for your child. And it's also available to us, right? I mean, he has Miss Judy three days a week for 15 hours. He has a Spanish teacher, which he's been with for how many years have you been three with? Three years. And what's her name? Miss Martha. Yes. So Miss Martha has been very instrumental in Micah learning Spanish. Um, and now what is your other teacher, your third teacher? Marcy. Mm -hmm. And what do you feel about robotics? Good. Yeah, what, what, I know, but I'm glad you feel good. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us some details about the things you get to learn in robotics. I get to code robots, enter robotic competitions, mm -hmm. Uh, I get to build very cool robots, mm -hmm. and I get to work with my teammate, Otis. That's right. So in your very first competition, how did you do in that? Or how did both of you do? Good. You, know, you came in uh, second place in their category for the very first one that they did their robotics competition. Everything was really a success, and... What did you guys create? We, Otis created a windmill, and I created a robot that moves trees instead of cuts them down. And what was the purpose of that? So you could make houses without cutting down thousands of trees. Mm -hmm. So land developers can move trees to somewhere else, right? That yes. was the idea. Or that was the concept. Right, exactly. So, um, back to the education piece. So, in being here, we've learned that we can pretty much, you know, put things together. There are lots of school options. Um, I think the key thing for parents to think about is how does your child learn and how adaptable are they um, are they really social? Because if they're social, they're going to really push themselves to learn the language. Mike is very social, so his Spanish is um, really good, right? Um, he's very comfortable in situations where there is no English, right? 
What do you feel about that? I think that it would be harder mm -hmm. because this is a language that I did not know at first. I knew English instead of Spanish first. Mm -hmm. So in saying that, mm -hmm. Spanish would technically be harder than English, okay. even though I'm very good at it. <laughs> we don't know because you haven't shared it. You're gonna share with us? Yep. Tell us where your favorite place is to go and visit, but in, in Mexico. Spanish. Anywhere. Si Guatanejo. I know, but in Spanish. Guatanejo is in Spanish. No, but a full sentence, not one word. Me gusta ir a Guatanejo. Está en México. Y es un playa grandote. <laughs> grandote. Grandote es? Giant. A giant what? Beach. Mm -hmm. So we went to Zihuatanejo last summer, which is the closest beach to San Miguel de Allende. Um, it is about four and a half hours, and I know I did a video, so you can try to find that somewhere in my uh, video feed. Um, so yeah, I mean, overall, as a parent in Mexico, um, I've actually really seen him grow quite a bit. I love that he's bilingual, like that's, to me, just such an accomplishment, you know? I don't know how you feel about it, because you know, this is not our norm, you know what I mean? It's not our norm for uh, our kids to to know it or have another language that they're comfortable with. So what do you think your next language will be that you're gonna learn? Francis. Francis. Bonjour. Bonjour, okay, <laughs> okay. Um, so in saying all of that, you know, I want to say that having a family in San Miguel has been amazing. There are tons of really supportive um, people that are living here, Mexicans and also foreigners. Um, I get asked a lot of questions about things and I don't always get to answer everything, um, but this is our experience, this is our life. We love it here. Last week you had an amazing weekend, right? Um, did we go to a party last week? I can't remember. Yes, we went to um, Kellen's house, right? Yeah, but it wasn't a party. No, it wasn't a party. I was invited to um, have wine. But the point is, is on Sunday, you were invited. We were invited to have lunch with our dear friends Naomi and Rolando. And, you know, we hung out for the afternoon. The boys got a really fun, cool ride in a Porsche, Porsche. convertible. So ever since then, Micah's been all about cars. You Actually, really... I was out about cars before that. No, you weren't. No, I was. You never really talked about cars that much. <laughs> now he's all about cars. He's like, what would your top three car choices be? Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler, Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> no, um, it, it was just really sweet and endearing. My point is, is that there's a lot to do here. Families are amazing. People are supportive. Um, you know, we've had a lot going on in our personal world, but we are living it. We are grateful. Um, Yes, I love that, you know, Mike is able to be here. Um, living in the United States really had me on edge um, as a parent. Um, you know, it's been, it's just been an amazing ride. So I'm really grateful for that. And I'm also grateful, like I said, for the affordability, um, for the choices that we have in terms of education, things to do. Uh, being able to experience multiple, multiple things, not just having, you know, we can only do this because our budget is this much. And, you know, in the U United States, the reality is, is a lot of parents would love to expand their children's horizons and do 
more things, but it's not always affordable or accessible to them, depending on where they live and their economic status. So here, I just feel like it affords us a little bit more. Um, you know, we can stretch ourselves a little bit more. If I wanna send him to robotics class, I can. If Taekwondo, I can. Um, music lessons, I can. It just makes it more accessible. Private school, I can. Tutor, I can. Um, again, all of these things add up, but the point is, is that you can customize your life a little bit more so that it's more beneficial to you. And so as a parent, you know, I encourage you, if you want to exit the United States or Canada, you know, I'm Canadian, so I can say that. Um, if you want to exit, Mexico's not a bad choice, you know, don't listen to the hype. Um, it's been really amazing. I'm gonna make a whole separate video about all the amazing women, mostly, that have been coming here to experience Casa Elm and also experiencing San Miguel de Allende. So in saying all of that, what else do you wanna share? Nothing? Oh, okay, no problem. <laughs> Um, Is there something that you want to ask me? No, I'm all set. I think we got it covered. So I just want to say thank you because he's a little shy sometimes. He doesn't always know what to say on cue, like mommy. But um, this kid's amazing. I love him so much. He's getting so big. Look at that 10 year old face. And um, yeah, it's been really, really good. Okay, we're gonna mess up the audio, okay? So it's been a, a really good uh, four years, uh, an amazing journey. I'm super grateful that we are able to be here in this country. Um, I see a lot of moms here with their children and I just, you know, I clap and hats off to you all. Um, and even people who are here as, you know, someone who is, locally from Mexico and a foreign parent that they, you know, choose to be in Mexico. Again, this is not a knock to the United States. It's just, I feel like this expands the life and world of um, a child in so many ways. And I just want people to not continue believing the hype that this place is horrible and it's so, so bad to be in Mexico. Like you guys, seriously, you have no idea, unless you get on a plane or you get in your car and you drive here, how amazing this country is. And so I just say thank you to the Mexicans for receiving us and to continue to receive us as people of color, bodies of color. Um, thank you for allowing us into your space. Thank you for being curious about us as brown people that also fit in with other brown people with different roots. Um, I was out yesterday evening um, with my new re relocation group and it was just amazing. Like I was hanging out with uh, my house manager and my um, relocation guests in Centro. And you know, they were like, they wanted to take pictures of my, my, my house manager. They wanted to touch my hair. Um, and you know, normally that's faux pas, right? For black women, but it's just such a beautiful experience to feel like people are interested in you and they want to know more about you and they are speaking like you know a few words of english so i continue to promote life in mexico and that's what expat life mexico is all about thank you again for being here if you have not subscribed to my channel please do so below any closing comments from my little man I want to tell my spirit animal. Okay, go ahead. My spirit animal is a Chinese dragon and my mystical spirit animal is Loch Ness Monster. No, oh, okay. <laughs> that sounds amazing and very interesting. Thank you for sharing. Anything you want to say in Spanish as we exit? Adios, mis amigos. Mm. Espero que vengas a México y ves a mi mamá. Adiós. Adiós. Muchas gracias. I love you so much, mi amor. Te amo. Y gracias para tu 
como se dice, um, your, pati your patience to patience. Esperanza. Ah, okay. He knows more than I do. Anyway, thank you for joining us. Um, and I promise you that I'm going to get <laughs> my act together. Um, I've just been overwhelmed, but we will be posting more and more videos. I'm going to get back into interviewing expats in Mexico. We're going to broaden our horizon. So thank you for being here. Thank you for enjoying the ride. If you have any questions or you want to do a relocation tour, visit casaelm.com. That's C-A-S-A-E-L-M.com. There you will see the tour dates and you will see RSVP options. Um, you can RSVP, you'll get tons of information about what we're doing and soon coming will be expatlifemexico.com. There you can book consultations that will help you on your journey to Mexico, San Miguel, day a and day. Um, this is where I live, this is what I know is San Miguel de Allende. If you want to go to Playa, I can give you a reference for over there or anywhere else in Mexico, but I live in San Miguel de Allende, which is an amazing Spanish colonial town, voted the number one best city to live in for the last uh, four or five, four out of five years on Traveler and Condé Nast, I think it is. But anyway, if you're not familiar with it, you can look it up. Um, we're doing great things here. So thanks for joining us, and we will see you again soon. Peace. Bye. My name's Micah. That's right. Bye, Micah.